of equipment that's pretty important is our scallion halter and how um, these individual pieces are going to help us um, get the job done or, or something we can talk about now. So our scallion halter is a flat halter that's nylon. Um, in a perfect world, I would probably replace this with a nice fancy um, leather stallion halter um, just because I think it's going to give us a little bit more longevity, but we've used this for the 10 years that I've been here, so I guess it's hung around a, a pretty long time. Um, uh, one of the uh, main things you need to think about is whatever halter you use to collect this stallion in, it should not be the halter that you use um, every day with this stallion. If I go get one of our guys with a regular rope halter on, that is their cue that they should act like a gelding when they come up here to the barn. Um, if this halter goes on them, and believe me, they know the difference, um, they are given the green light to act like a stallion. He can talk, he can prance, he can you know, do his little funny stallion things coming up to the barn, and that's completely fine. Um, if he acts like that in a normal halter, he's going to be reprimanded, um, particularly with stallions with very high libido. Um, you want there to be that distinct difference between act like a stallion and don't act like a stallion because it's a little bit difficult to do things with a stallion acting like a stallion when you need to do regular routine maintenance like brushing or cleaning their feet out or getting their hooves trimmed or something. Um, so we try to make a very distinct difference between, hey, we're going to the breeding shed and we're doing normal horse things, act like a gelding kind of thing. So our halter here, normal flat nylon halter, with a chain, um, I would say half of our stallions probably don't need a chain, um, but just because it's there doesn't mean you have to use it, um, and that way you do kind of have that little bit of extra control um, if you do need it or kind of got into a sticky situation. Um, as you can see here, we have our chain covered in vet wrap. Um, we have one or two stallions that there are two things about the chain they don't like. Um, they're a little bit shy and don't really like you getting after them, but every now and again, they like to try to pull you around, so we kind of need a little something extra there just in case we need it, but we wrap it so it kind of dulls that bite that the chain has. Um, and also, it makes a lot of noise when it jingles around, and we have a couple that uh, get distracted very easily. Um, so by having that vet wrap on there, it keeps the chain from clinking and clanging around against everything so it's a little bit quieter. Um, also, uh, you can see that our lead rope here is quite a bit longer than your typical eight-foot lead rope on a regular halter. A um, couple of reasons why. Um, when I bring this horse up here to the tease wall, he's probably going to strike um, at the wall of the mare. That's just typical stallion behavior. They like to move their feet around. I don't want to be standing on top of him, and I want to be able to get as far away from him as possible. Uh, while still maintaining control. Um, so I kind of want to give him a little bit of lead rope um, and kind of stand back out of his way while he does his thing at the tease wall. Also, when I'm leading him over here to the phantom and when he jumps on the phantom, um, sometimes they get a little light on their front end. Um, I want to be able to be far enough away to stay safe, but close enough where I can maintain contact. And I would say the majority of the time I don't need a lead rope this long, but when I do, I'm very glad that I have one that gives me a little bit extra room to kind of move out of the way of his feet. Um, we'll talk about how we adjust the chain when we go to catch Millennium here to collect him here in a little bit. Um, but we usually go through the cheek piece, wrap it around the nose, through the other cheek piece, and up on the other side. Um, there are alternative ways that we can adjust that chain to kind of give us more or less control if we need it. Um, and we can kind of talk about those things when we go to put this uh, on the stallion himself. So now we're going to talk a little bit about our setup and our typical um, way we kind of move through this to, to go to the Phantom and how to get this stallion collected. Um, in any breeding barn you go to, you're going to have some place to put a tease mare um, in general. We have, we call it our tease stall here, right when you enter the barn. Um, you can see we have the um, boards protected here by a mat, so when the stallion strikes, he's not constantly chipping away at our boards. He can kind of hit this mat, also protects his feet and his legs um, when he does strike and, and act silly here at the window. Uh, you can see the bars here, not wide enough for them to get their head in. However, the mare can come up to the wall and they can have um, some touch uh, through the bars here. Um, some stallions need a little bit more um, access to the mare, so we do have 
um, a wall over here on the other side um, where you can take the entire um, uh, restraint system out and they can have full access to the mare. Um, it also has mats on it as well. Um, so when we go to collect the horse, um, we will put the mare in here, lead the stallion up to the wall here, and he can have access to her here um, to kind of start the tease process. Uh, Millennium is very good at this and knows his job and he'll probably be ready to go by the time he gets up here. Uh, we still kind of go through the typical process. He has access to the mare here and then we back him out of the barn and clean him um, to kind of get ready for the collection process. Um, some of our stallions um, need a little bit more like we talked about so we can actually lead them around to the other side and they can have that more access to the mare. Um, some of the things I would change about our setup, um, surprisingly most stallions adapt really, really well to our setup, although there are a couple of things that kind of put some bottlenecks in it and kind of disrupt our, our flow process. Um, the fact that we tease here and then the phantom is over here and the stallion faces away from the mare um, is something that I would probably change um, if I could redo everything. Um, most barns will have either a tease slot next to the phantom, which we have room to put the mare up there when we train these stallions to collect, um, or they have a tease box in front of the phantom um, so they can tease the mare and then as the horse mounts the phantom, the tease mare is in front of them, um, which kind of makes the learning process a little bit easier. However, um, knock on wood, I don't think we have trained a stallion yet that hasn't finally got it, doing it a little bit backwards the way we do it, and that's also how it fits in our breeding shed here. So once we go through the tease process, the washing process that we'll kind of go through when we get Millennium up here, um, we come back to the tease wall and collect it, or tease him until he is ready to actually go and jump the phantom. So we talked about how we typically tease our trained stallions kind of over here as we walk into the barn. Um, if we have some that need a little bit more access to the mare, um, a little bit more time to tease, we do have the ability to come over here and take this piece of plywood out so they can touch the mare, they can stick their whole head in there. Um, again, protected if they were to go to strike the boards or whatever. Um, however, there are two things I really don't like about the way this is set up. Um, a, you typically handle the stallion from the left side. So if I were holding the stallion on the left side, I'm between him and this wall over here. Um, and it's not 100% safe, I think. Um, also, we're standing here, then we have to somehow get over there um, to jump the phantom. So um, that gives you kind of two options. You kind of stand here where you're kind of trapped between the wall and the stallion, which probably isn't the safest. Um, or you handle the stallion from the opposite side. Some handle that no problem. However, I would say the majority of ours get a little bit concerned about you being on the off side and then don't want to pay any attention to the mayor. They're wondering why you're over there instead. Um, so those stallions we do handle on this side um, and then have to make the decision on trying to push the stallion away from us, which usually is not gonna go very well, or pull the mare away from the wall and then kind of turn around. But keeping in mind you're pulling them towards you to go towards the phantom. So it's very important to kind of watch where feet are and, and a be a little bit more proactive about um, them striking or jumping or, or whatever. Um, and keeping that in mind is gonna keep you a lot more safe. Again, if we had um, some alternative ways to put this together, I would like to have this in front of the phantom um, and have a lot more room between me, the wall, the phantom, everything. Um, we're a little bit tight on space in here. However, like I said before, for the most part, it works pretty darn good, um, especially once we kind of get them trained to our system.